Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist D.T. from weatherrisk.com, loyal Phillies fan looking forward to spring, and we've got a lot to talk about here. I'm the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of catastrophe. Where is spring? We really don't know. Had a couple of days of it a little while ago, but this winter pattern does not want to give up the ghost, and we'll get into that as well. It's, uh... I guess uh, not 840 here in the east, 640 on the west coast. Let's talk weather. Why not? Let's monger. In our topics here, we'll be talking about uh, the pattern holding, the March 16th, 17th mid-Atlantic uh, snowstorm that appears to be developing quite rapidly, uh, brief warm-ups that we've been having, then more cold patterns, a three-wave pattern developing as we go into the heart of the spring season, it looks like, especially by the time we get to April, and then April 2014, which just, well, it's just going to serious, serious suckage. It's going to be a bad, nasty uh, early spring, no doubt about that. All right, let's get right to it here. First, we're going to take a look at the ocean water temperatures. Now, this is the current ocean water temperature maps from the folks at Storm Vista. And you can see the huge pool of uh, warm ocean water temperatures in the northern Pacific. Now, what's different here a little bit is that it appears to have shifted somewhat. Uh, originally, the cold water was over here. And now, as you can see, it's more in this area and appears to be driving towards the coast. So this could potentially shift the pattern from a positive T and H pattern more to a positive P and A pattern. Then that would still make the pattern very cold, though, for as we go into April, um, especially in the eastern half of the country, so and stormy. But that's what appears to be happening with the water temperatures. They appear to be shifting towards Canada significantly. And if we can see, in fact, over the last 14 days, we can see a little bit of warmth developing uh, at different locations here. You can see warm temperatures developing in here. And also look at this. There may be signs of the El Nino trying to develop, the El Nino trying to develop right there. But on the West Coast, you can see warm temperatures trying to warm up there a little bit. Okay. Now let's get uh, to the overall pattern. Now this was the map from uh, March 10th when we had that big warm up in temperatures into the 60s and 70s. Look where the polar vortex is, folks. The vortex has retreated back up into here, as you can see it, way up in there. And now we had a zonal flow here, zonal flow here, and a bit of a ridge there. And we had a mild pattern. And we can see that on the uh, next map as well. This is the uh, one from the Penn State Ewall site from a few days ago. And again, we can see quite clearly, there's the vortex. You see it right here? Okay. And uh, there it's gone like this. And it's, mo it's moving this way. And that's going circling back up. And as a result, the ridge was able to build rapidly in. Uh, the whole pattern here on the West Coast collapsed, and we were able to get warming temperatures. So that's what had happened. Of course, that's not the current pattern. And the... Uh, as long as that warm uh, pool of ocean water temperatures in the North Pacific stays there, we are not going to stay or not going to move into a sustained warm pattern. Now, this is the European model from yesterday. Now, this feature has been showing up in the European model for the last couple of days. Now, this is the, this is the uh, 12Z run, I believe, from uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, March 12th. And you can see what the model is doing. Here's the rain snow line. I've, I've highlighted this in the white. I always use the white color. So there's your rain snow line right there, as you can see it. And there's the low. And with, Now, initially, everybody's too warm for snow or ice here, but this is low-level cold air coming southward. And you can see the high trying to come here and see the high coming here. The low moves like this off the Hatteras coast because the high prevents it from turning up the coast. So the low goes like this, as you can see. And then this area in mid-Atlantic states sees significant snow and ice. Maybe New York City, but it looks like mostly south of New York City, Jersey, Philly, Baltimore, Delaware, Maryland, central and northern Virginia, maybe West Virginia as well. That's what the European model was showing yesterday. And uh, the uh, GFS, well, of course, the GFS from yesterday, the operational run was a complete miss. Why? Because the GFS sucks moose when it comes to forecasting East Coast winter storms. It always has and it always will until they get that thing upgraded. Now, the uh, ensembles were different. The ensembles had the low off of Georgia, but it still had significant precipitation all the way up to the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. And a pretty good precip there over central and northern Virginia and Maryland. So, again, this is a big difference here. These are significantly different, this versus this. This is a big difference in here. So, the ensembles were showing a, a significant event to, uh, going that way as well. Now, this is the Canadian from yesterday afternoon, and uh, I thought the Canadian initially was nonsense because it had two separate lows here, and the only it was the only model which had the two lows. You could see one here, 
996 is a pretty strong low, and the other one here. And what that does is that drives the snow all the way up into Connecticut, New York City, Pennsylvania, Philly, New York, uh, Long Island, Boston, Massachusetts, Connecticut, the whole thing. That's a viable solution. I don't think it's going to get that far north, and the Canadian has shifted south, but the Canadian does get points because it has the idea of two lows. So the Canadian is going to get a big win here. Canada for the win. And we'll see the other models have gone that way. So there's one for the Canadians. And this is the, now this is the year, excuse me, this is the NAM from early this morning, 84 hours out. And again, people saying, Dave, what are you doing using the NAM at 84 hours? Well, we're not using it to make a forecast. We just want to see which scenario is going to work out, the European or the Canadian scenario. So and what we can see here is that clearly the European model is leading the way in terms of getting the overall sequence of events correct. Now, we can see, notice the light blue colors here. You can see the two distinct jets. This is the, pol this is the polar jet, as you can see like that and here's a subtropical jet you can see that okay and there's a huge upper low to go over texas right here that's the storm now the polar vortex comes down and that brings the cold air southward so the cold air reaches the north carolina virginia border because the vortex comes southward there you go and now we have the setup for the storm here's the cold high and okay driving the cold southward you can see the colds coming southward now, even though the snow line here is still over Maryland and, and maybe Baltimore, the rain snow line, in Virginia, North Carolina, it could be low-level cold air, cold enough for ice or freezing rain. And there's the low coming out of Oklahoma, spreading the precipitation this way. So, in this sort of pattern, there's no way the system can go up to Michigan and Ohio because of the huge, because of the polar jet coming in here. So, there's no way the system can't, that's not that's out of the question. It has to, it can only go this direction. So, that's what all that shows. Okay. And uh, this was the uh, GFS from early uh, this morning. Again, nothing. <laughs> it, I, I, I'm at a loss. I, I just, it's a piece of crap. Okay, the GFS ensembles, vastly different. Now, this, I believe, was the, um, uh, uh, yeah, this is the early morning, the 0Z uh, GFS ensembles from early here on Thursday morning. And again, it has a bigger high, uh, the lows in better shape, much more precipitation throughout all the mid-Atlantic states in here. And again, this is potentially ice down in here. But uh, that's, a, that's a significant improvement. That's not a bad solution. Uh, this is the Canadian from early uh, this morning, as uh, it was, and uh, you can see that the Canadian was uh, had the main low inland here, the front coming in this way, as you can see. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> As you can see, it had the uh, coming in that way. But um, uh, it, it uh, turned out the Canadian quickly gave up that idea. And then uh, this was the uh, op this was the Canadian ensembles, as you can see. And the Canadian ensembles, which much more like the European, it's much more like the GFS. The lows off that North Carolina coast, but it has significant precipitation, as you can see. Um, Right up in this whole area right here, as you can see, it's got a lot of precipitation here. And that's all snow. It's north of the rain snow line, just like that. So that's a big step for the Canadian. Uh, it's a big step towards uh, getting a more unified solution. Now, this here is the European model from early this morning. And early on Thursday morning, we can see the low there, the highs coming southward. Coming like this, as you can see. And it's driving the front. Okay, this is low-level cold air now coming in here. Too warm for snow, but not cold. too warm for ice or freezing rain. And the low tracks off the coast. And it looks like it's snow here over Virginia, ports of North Carolina, Maryland. Now, the European weakens the system. It collapses it, and it may be, a little, may be doing that a little too fast. Uh, but then again, this is not going to be a huge system. This is not a monster storm coming up the coast. This is another medium-sized area of low pressure, which we've seen so many times this winter. And uh, uh, that matches the seasonal trend. So that's, that's probably the right way to play this. Now, the European ensembles were a little more bullish from earlier this morning. Uh, again, you can see that um, it has the rain-snow line a little over... Um, Charlottesville here on Sunday evening on the 16th and then it drops down towards well Norfolk and into northwest North Carolina by um, 7 p.m. on the 17th so uh, on Monday night so it's a little slower on the European ensemble uh, and it's but it turns colder the cold air does get east of the mountains and it drives to southward so this would argue sleet over Richmond and going to snow maybe rain going to sleet in North Carolina and significant snow over Charlottesville and and uh, much of Maryland Delaware southern New Jersey southern Pennsylvania maybe New York City maybe not uh, New York City looks to be on the northern fringe here 
Uh, this is the 6 EGFS Ensemble. This is a big step improvement. It's got significant precipitation now into Central Virginia, into Richmond. This would be snow, potentially, uh, or ice going to snow. Um, and, of course, obviously, as the GFS sees this better and better, the precipitation shield is going to expand. The load is not coming north of Hatteras. So it, there's not a real north trend, per se. What's happening is the northern end of the precipitation shield is expanding. And we can see here's the 12Z GFS. Okay, now here it's got the first wave coming out, and it has a little bit of precipitation here, some snow and ice here. But there's the main low. The main low sits there, and then the, the model has now two lows here and here, and nothing at all in the middle Atlantic states. What is this thing doing? Oh, God, it's such a piece of crap. Okay, and if you compare that to this is the GFS Ensemble, totally different, totally different. And this is viable. Again, the lows coming up the coast, uh, the precipitation now getting up as far north as New York City. Uh, the low is not coming for, again, the low is not north of Hatteras. So it's the low isn't coming north, just the precipitation is. Now, this looks like an ice event for much of central and southern Virginia, maybe North Carolina. And snow, once you go up by D.C. and north of Charlottesville and uh, northern Virginia, that area. And significant snow possibly up to New York City now. Uh, this is <clears throat> the Canadian from midday. You can see the rain snow line, got heavy snow over northern Virginia, west of Virginia to D.C., snow up to New York City and Pennsylvania, ice and rain over central Virginia, and there's plain rain over southeast Virginia and North Carolina. This is the, uh, is this the Canadian Ensembles? I believe it is. Let me take a look, see. It is the Canadian Ensembles. And the Canadian Ensembles, again, you have to give the model credit. Two lows. Yes, that's correct. Now, here's the ice line. You can see it. There's a rain snow line here. This is all ice in here. This shows a lot of cold air damming here, low-level temperatures. This could be some ice going in this way. There's the high. And once the high gets a little further east, that cold air is going to come in stronger. And Richmond could see an ice event out of this, even though it's mid-March. It's hard to see, but it could be an ice event. And then, again, northern half of Virginia, the northern Shenandoah Valley, the D.C. up to New York City, looks like a good snow event for those areas. Here's the European. Uh, no, excuse me. That's the Canadian again. And uh, this is the European model here. And uh, what the European is doing, as you can see, again, look, two lows, like the Canadian was showing, one here, one here. And then this low moves away, and a second low comes up behind it on Monday night. So the European is showing a slower event as well. So again, you've got to give points to the uh, Canadian for getting that right. And here's the European ensemble. Again, uh, same idea. Uh, one low here, as you can see, another low here. This low goes away. And again, the ensemble at 96 hours, again, valid on the 17th, same thing, two lows. Notice the rain snow line is now north of Richmond, north of Richmond of both models, but there's a lot of ice in here in central Virginia potentially, so we'll have to watch that carefully. And again, that's a pretty good snow event as far north as New York City. Yep, and much of Pennsylvania. Now, beyond that, this is this is the European model here for the 19th. This looks like a potentially significant severe weather event up here in the Midwest, maybe the first one of the season, so we'll have to watch that carefully. And then uh, and this is a day. This is the European model from a couple of days ago on March 11th, and you can see the polar vortex was over northern Canada, and it looked like it was lifting northward, and maybe the cold air might shift over towards Eurasia a little bit. We might get a break. That's what the model was kind trying, trying to hint at here, but that turns out to be nonsense. Here's the new GF, excuse me, European ensemble at day 10. Look at this. Three polar vortexes, a three-wave pattern. This is this is a, this is a very stable pattern here. It's like a triangle here, here, and here. And uh, it's a very stable pattern. This is not good here for as we move into uh, April at all. This is a cold, nasty-looking pattern. And sure enough, by day 10, we go towards the end of the month. There's another Arctic cold front coming southward like this, as you can see it. Let me call it up here. You can see the front coming this way. You have more cold air pressing southward. Oh, what a terrible-looking start to April. And then as you look at the CFS, this is, uh, you know, the week two forecast, the general pattern here. You can see a ridge on the west coast, trough in the east, generally cool temperatures in the northeast. But if you look at the individual model runs, look at this. This is March 28th. Look at this Arctic outbreak coming on the CFS. Wow. <laughs> and then this is March 30th. Oh, my God. Look how cold this thing is. Holy mackerel. You know, you think this has got to be overdone, but maybe it isn't given how cold the winter has been. Look at this. Very impressive. Uh, but it's not done yet. It used to go into April. Look at the April 15th. What the heck? <laughs> uh, that's a, that, I hope that can't be right, but I'm, I'm afraid it is, given this pattern. Look at that amazing amount of temperature anomalies and trough in the eastern United States. Okay? Look at April 21st. What? <laughs> a gigantic closed low over the Midwest? 
Are you kidding me? That might even bring snow to portions of the Midwest. And then look where it is on April 28th, heading towards uh, Pennsylvania. Holy mackerel. So very impressive looking maps here. April does not look very good. Anyway, this is DT. I'll talk to you soon.